the numbers are rolling. Okay, video number two. Uh, please get your authorized uh, version of the scriptures and please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at here briefly. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me because sometimes my mouth go quicker than my brain. Okay? Now, there will be links for you in the description box talking about this. Okay? We want Matthew chapter 12. We are going to be reading verses 24 on to... Am I in Matthew 12? Yes, I am. Verses 24 on to verse 24. Oh, what did I write down? Uh, uh, well, to, uh, verse, oh, let's see. On to verse 32. Okay, on to verse 32. All right? All right. There was a dear Hamedic sister, I'll give her that thing, <laughs> you know, who sent emails to me about the unpardonable sin, which is a favorite thing with the charismatics, okay, the uh, Pentecostal charismatics, okay, Pentecostals, the wicked Pentecostals, okay, who, when you, <laughs> like, the they do that blah, 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 blah. nonsense. It's like, dude, shut up. Just shut up. Okay? They like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Show me in Acts chapter 2 where Peter said that. He didn't. Okay? You start speaking in a devilish blah, 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 Okay? And spasmodically shaking like that. The Lord rebuke you. You shut up. And then what, what is that? You blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Show me where that says that. Now, there, there are other places within the gospel accounts where this is addressed. They like Matthew chapter. They like Matthew. They like Matthew. So, Matthew chapter 12, verses 24 on to verse 32. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Okay? Number one thing to remember here. Rightly dividing is a key important thing for this okay you pentecostals have no idea what rightly dividing is okay you don't okay links in the description okay all right you don't want to watch them you don't want to go through the scriptures yourself but you want to be led for your feelings the lord rebuke you you shut up and you can go to hell then okay but but had christ died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet yeah. Come on. No, yeah. Why is that significant? You read Hebrews chapter 9, Tom. When did the New Testament begin? At the Council of Nicaea, Tom? <laughs> you idiot. No. With his birth? No. With the death of the testator. That's when the New Testament began. Okay. Read Hebrews chapter 9 on your own time. Dear young Hermetic lady, sister, okay, whatever. I gave you that. But yet, you still doubt it. Why is that? Well, we're not going to get into that. But, okay, the law is still binding while Christ was on the earth. Okay? I do not uh, uh, agree at all with an individual who says that the, uh, one of the dispensations was the three-year ministry of Christ. I think that's horse pucking, personally. Okay? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, whatever, okay? Whatever. But, Jesus Christ is on the earth physically right there, is he not? Come on. Yes, he is. Okay? And Jesus knew their thoughts, he's a mind reader, and said unto them, Every kingdom against itself, or every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Jesus Christ, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding, but he was also doing what? Offering the kingdom of heaven, the actual, physical, literal kingdom, 
where he would be ruling and reigning as king on a throne at Jerusalem. Okay, he was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay, so it's significant to note every kingdom. Satan today, today, Satan, Christianity, Roman Catholicism is seeking to establish a kingdom. Okay, that kingdom that that man of sin, the son of perdition, will come into and rule and reign from. Okay, so Satan is the one trying to build a kingdom today. For the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay, keep that in mind. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Now, this is true. Satan cannot cast out Satan. That's right. But what happens when you get these wicked Pentecostal charismatic faith healers, uh, deliverance ministries? Okay. Um, Alberto Rivera, his comic book, The Force, that Jack Chick wrote. Okay. Uh, the Force talks about, Alberto Rivera talks about how the devil will put on a pageant play and because Satan won't cast out Satan, but for the suspension of disbelief, when the Roman Catholic Jesuit priest goes to the young lady who's vomiting pea, green pea soup with uh, stigmata and speaking in Latin backwards, okay, and he does his abracadabra, hocus pocus, and then the demon, as they call it, goes away, what happens? You're meant to, you are meant to believe, you are told to believe that it was the Roman Catholic Church, that Jesuit priest that did it. Uh, it's a facade. It's a game. They're play acting. Okay? They're play acting. When you see these deliverance guys do this stuff where they're, you know, the, uh, that one Sunderguard guy. Oh, and there's another dude. Okay? And up. Uh, Credit to His Holiness in Maine because he had that video about that kind of stuff. You gotta give it, gotta give it where it's due, okay? But um, you know these guys who were actually imparting devils, not taking them out, okay? But see, what happens is these devils play act. Satan will not cast out Satan, but what happens? They put on a show for everyone to make believe that a devil is being cast out by the righteous Pentecostal charismatic Roman Catholic. Preacher, Jesuit priest, or whatever. Okay? you got to remember that. Okay? You've got to remember that. When you see these Pentecostal guys with their, Get out! Get out! Get out! They're putting them in. And when everything goes calm and they're all back to normal, it's the devils just playing around with you. It's, a, it's in theater, the suspension of disbelief. Okay? All right, let's continue. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Hold your place here. Very, very quick video here to, uh, with this one. Very quick, to the point. Deuteronomy 32, verses 28 on to verse 35. 28 on to verse 35 and Deuteronomy 32. For they are a nation void of counsel. There is none, there, neither is there any understanding departing from evil in them. Oh, that they were wise, wisdom, wise, acquainted with the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, and apart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital or rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their lowercase r rock is not as our capital r, uh, capital r rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Where was that? Where, where was that? Uh, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Back to Deuteronomy. Verse 32 on to verse 35. <laughs> For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, 
and their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter, their wine is the poison of dragons, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the dragon. There's so many names. Okay? And the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Go back to Matthew 20, uh, 12. 12, picking up at verse 27 again. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Okay? But if I cast out devils by the capitalist Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God, spiritual, this is in the book of Matthew. Okay? The phrase, kingdom of heaven. Find it elsewhere for me outside the book of Matthew. Find it for me. Find it for me. Find it for me. It only appears in the book of Matthew. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is always a reference unto the physical kingdom that will be in Jerusalem. Okay? So we see the distinction here of kingdom of God that it's not a reference unto the physical kingdom of heaven because this is in the book of Matthew. So what is that talking about? The spiritual kingdom. Okay? The spiritual kingdom. Not a physical, literal kingdom. Rome today is physically trying to build a kingdom for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And they're succeeding. Okay? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself, and Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, He is the Father, okay? Then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Right there. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except first, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. He that is not against me, uh, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm not against Jesus. Which Jesus are you talking about? <laughs> See that that that's a tricky one. They come to this one. It's like, oh, I hey, I don't got like that Elon Musk guy. Uh, 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 what's that one video? An older one. Not against Christ. Okay, not against. Beg your pardon. Christ. Okay, I'm not against Jesus. I'm not against Jesus. What what Jesus are you talking about, buddy? See, because when you present to these people the actual Jesus of Scripture, uh, they hate that. They hate the real God. But they want a God who pacifies them, not angry, uh, puff them up and them saving themselves by whether their own belief or they go to the uh, Baptist church or whatever. Okay? All right? And also, too, he that is not with me is against me, Offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? In the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> this is, oh. In the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to be physically on the earth again. He was physically present here, wasn't he? Not your head. Yes, he was. Okay? Is Jesus Christ himself physically on the earth today? Oh, maybe in Australia and Scotland, maybe. Crazy. No, he isn't. His body, we are, but he himself is not physically present on the earth today. He's not. Despite what these wicked Pentecostal charismatics want you to believe, they saw God, you did not see God. You did not see God. You saw an angel of light. Okay? The Lord rebuke you, you lying devil, who say, well, I've seen it. You've seen the devil. You have not seen the Lord. Okay? Okay? He that is not with me is against me. The kingdom of heaven, it's all works. You read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the very first verse, you find out what faith is. You don't need faith when you can see. I don't need faith to believe in this, paper, this thing of paper towels here, okay? In the kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ is good. That is east. 
Jesus Christ is going to be sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. You're going to be able to see him. It is not by grace through faith. Ah! It's not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? It is works only during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You have to remember that. Okay? You have to remember that. Sermon on the Mount. Uh, 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 you know, everyone, especially heretics like the Sermon on the Mount. Because it's all works. Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. And it's not a faith predicated on the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is all works. So, he's offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Alright? He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Okay? You're either with the Lord or against the Lord during the kingdom of heaven, and it's all works. There is no either or. Okay? That does and see what people will do today is well, I'm not against the Lord Jesus Christ. And try to and, and these Christians like, well, see, they're not against him, so they're they're you know, they're on his side, so they're actually saved and they don't know it. No, 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 no. This that verse specifically has everything to do with the kingdom of heaven. Okay? I know you Pentecostals don't understand that because you're lost. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Okay? Here's the thing about this. Oh, let's finish the verse. Oh, and I already uh, finished the verse. Verse 32. And whosoever, shall, and whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither the world to come. That's very important. And uh, dear young hermetic woman, um, I, I, I explain, if you're watching, I doubt you are, but if you happen to see this dear lady, dear woman, I explain that to you. I gave you the verses, I gave you the links, and you kept coming. Why? You didn't want to buy it because you want to justify yourself. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. I, I know, Brad, you said she was... Hey, you know, she never really identified herself as a charismatic Pentecostal, but even though she believed all pretty much the same things. But whatever, whatever. Okay, yeah, here, here. Okay, there you go. Oh. Anyway, look at that verse. Verse 32. It shall not be forgiven him either in this world, present tense, when the Lord Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Or neither in the world to come. Is that today? Well, see, that would be I have a problem with that. <coughs> because we are once saved, always saved in this dispensation. Okay? We do not have to worry about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost because Jesus Christ is not physically present on the earth as he will be during the kingdom of heaven. The world to come is a reference onto the kingdom of heaven which he was offering onto the Jewish people at this time. Okay? So, dear friend. Alright? So, here's the thing. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, Pentecostal. Which you don't. Which you don't. Okay? Number one, you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Number two, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Number three, Jesus Christ is, was sent onto the circumcision. Okay, to the Jew first. Okay? Alright. Number four. Nowhere but. Nowhere but. The, uh, the gospel accounts. The first, the four gospel accounts. Not in all of them, but before the death, burial, and resurrection. All right, and the only one who ever mentions, ever mentions the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is the Lord himself. Paul doesn't talk about it. Peter doesn't talk about it. John doesn't talk about it. Okay? 
after the death, burial, and resurrection. In the, in the Pauline epistles, in Peter, in, in Hebrews, in uh, Revelation, in Jude, in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, you read nothing more about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Why is that? Why is that? Because it, because it only applies when the Lord is physically... See, when during the kingdom of heaven, the Lord's going to be on that throne. Okay? The Lord, Jesus Christ, God the Father, is going to be on the throne in Jerusalem. Then you're going to have a problem on your hands about blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Because you've got to remember, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Okay? Okay? All right? There are links for you in the description box. Okay? If you're going to be lazy and want to go with your feelings and don't consider the, these things and go through the scriptures yourself, the Lord rebuke you. Ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? All right? Listen. The only time that you're going to have to worry about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is during the kingdom of heaven. Hey, you, Pentecostal, Catholic, show me other than the Lord Jesus Christ in the Pauline epistles, anything, anything after the death, burial, and resurrection. After the death, burial, and resurrection. Show me someone other than the Lord talking about blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. You won't find it. It's not there. Paul doesn't talk about it. Peter doesn't talk about it. John doesn't talk about it after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? It's not mentioned in the book of Revelation. It's only mentioned by the Lord himself while he was physically on the earth, while the law was still binding. You do not... And, and, and these guys... They, like I told, I've, I've experienced this on many occasions. They get into their blah 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 and you're like, dude, shut up. Just shut up. The Lord rebuke you. That's filth. Shut up. And they're like, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, buddy, find that for me. Find me in Acts chapter 2, which you think is the gospel. It's not. Find me in Acts chapter 2 where Peter says that. Show me anywhere where Peter says that. Show me anywhere where Paul says that. Show me anywhere where John says that other than the Lord himself. Show it to me. Show it to me. See, you're being deceived. And if you're afraid of blaspheming the Holy Ghost, then what does that mean? That there's no eternal security for you today, is there? And a Catholic and a Pentecostal do not believe in one saved, always saved. Because it works. Okay. So, uh, that is how that this will be answered. Okay? So, just so you know. All right? Uh, thank you for watching this if you do. Love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.